And tomorrow, suspended Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton's impeachment trial will begin. Fox's Greg Grogan looks at the uh, issues in this case and a look at how we got here. By proceeding Serving under a cloud of security fraud charges, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton entered 2020 immersed in a pair of intertwined relationships, one with his mistress and another with political donor Nate Paul, a real estate mogul under FBI investigation. Rice political scientist Mark Jones. Some might call him an investor, some might call him a grifter. I think it's probably a combination of the two. Prosecutors allege Paul convinced Paxton to weaponize his agency in the businessman's defense. That August, Paxton hired an outside attorney to serve as a special prosecutor, empowered to subpoena law enforcement officers involved in the Paul investigation. Paxton is also alleged to have revealed to Paul the identities of state and federal agents, some of whom were later targeted with subpoenas. That same month, Paxton issued an official opinion calling for the cancellation of property foreclosure sales, citing pandemic crowd restrictions. The measure kept a dozen Paul properties off the auction block. Again, Professor Jones. If that's pretty clear direct evidence that Paxton was shamelessly using the Office of Attorney General and his powers to benefit a single individual and making a mockery of the law. And in what prosecutors view as a violation of his duty to protect charitable organizations, Paxton ordered his agency to intervene in a legal dispute between Paul and an Austin-based nonprofit. All that combines to show someone that has no shame and has no principles and has no real scruples. So why? Why would the state's top cop risk so much to help one so-called friend? Impeachment prosecutors suggest the answer could well be concealment of the extramarital affair, along with bribes in the form of a job for his mistress and a six-figure renovation of Paxton's home, both allegedly funded by Nate Paul. By October of 2020, mounting concern within the AG's office hit critical mass. Unable to persuade their boss to disengage from Paul, seven senior deputies blew the whistle, telling the FBI and Texas Rangers that Paxton had abused his power and accepted bribes. Scott Braddock covers Texas politics for the Quorum Report. These, again, are rock rib conservative attorneys who said no more. This is corruption. We're out of here, and we're going to let the authorities know about it. Despite his opponent's critical barrage, Paxton prevailed in the 2022 GOP primary and coasted to victory in November. Safely reelected, the attorney general still faced a civil suit lodged by his former deputies. This February, a court settlement was announced in which Paxton apologized to the lieutenants he'd fired and agreed to pay them $3.3 million, compensation to be funded by taxpayers. It opened the door to the legislature having to investigate the whole mess. With the legislative session entering its final week, House leaders revealed the completion of an extensive, largely secret investigation. Acting with extraordinary speed, the General Investigating Committee approved articles of impeachment. On May 27th, House impeachment managers made their case. But members, no one person should be above the law least not the top law enforcement official of the state of Texas. Dissenting House members argued Paxton was being railroaded. It is all rumor, it is all innuendo, it is all speculation. Have all members voted? The final vote was 121 to 23. For the first time ever, a sitting attorney general would be forced to stand trial on the floor of the Texas Senate. Greg Grugan, Fox News. We will stream the impeachment trial on fox4news.com and on the your smart TV on Fox Local. You can also download our news app for free to watch.